Welcome to Watch Therefore, the program designed to help the disciple of Messiah Jesus obey His command to watch therefore and be ready for you don't know the hour or the day your Lord is coming. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee encouraging everyone who's watching more than ever to watch therefore and be ready. So glad to be with you once again on the program Watch Therefore. And once again, the Lord has given me a powerful, potentially life-changing word from His Word for all of us today. Let's start off with a word of prayer. O oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, please bless every viewer today that we would be more like Jesus, our Savior, after this program than we were when we started because your word effectively works in us. Bless all all who are watching today, and I ask it in Messiah Jesus' name, Father. Amen. We're continuing on in our teaching in 2 Peter, and what I'd like to do is do a review read of what Peter reminded us of in the last teaching on the program. And he reminds us of these things, and I want to tell you, when he says these things, he's speaking of the powerful expressions of grace and mercy that our Father in heaven and the Messiah our Messiah, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the way that God is operating through the lives of His children. And also, when you hear these things, it speaks of our very specific responsibilities to cooperate with His grace and mercy. So let's look at Second Peter in review, chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Well, next, Peter has something very important for all disciples of Messiah Jesus that comes from an earlier event that we find in three of the Gospels. Let's look at the Gospel of Mark in chapter 9. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And a cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no one anymore, but only Jesus with themselves. With that as a backdrop, Let's go into today's teaching in 2 Peter, beginning in uh, verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So Peter is not only a preacher of the first coming of Messiah Jesus, but he also is a preacher of the second coming of Messiah Jesus. And he speaks here of that event we saw in the Gospel of Mark when Messiah Jesus was transfigured in front of them and they got a glimpse of his glory. Now watch this. Peter's going to make a comparison between what he and the others saw on that mountain and the word 
of the living God in Bible prophecy. Again, he's going to give a comparison between what they saw and the prophetic word of God in Bible prophecy. Here we go. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Let's unpack this for a moment. Peter tells us that Bible prophecy as it pertains to end time events and the second coming of Messiah Jesus is more reliable than what their eyes saw on that mountain that we, that scenario we saw in the Gospel of Mark. Not only that, Peter tells us that you, we, do well to take heed of the words of Bible prophecy. Take heed means that you do well to learn, understand, and adjust your life around Bible prophecy. I'm doing this. Personally, this is how I live. Uh, as things are getting so dark and evil and strange in the world, I want the light turned up in my life. And so I've doubled up on my Bible reading. I went from reading the whole Bible once per year, per year to twice per year. Along with all the other different studies that I'm doing, preparing for Bible studies, going to Africa, preaching the gospel, and uh, of course, this television program. And let me ask you, what is, what is one of the least taught subjects of the Bible in most churches? And first, let me say, thank the Lord. For those who are being responsible as shepherds and pastors and Bible teachers. Hallelujah. But one of the most untaught subjects in church today is Bible prophecy. And guess what? It's disobedient and it's foolish. You see, the closer we get to the rapture and second coming of our Messiah Jesus, the darker and duller much of what is called the church is getting they walk in the darkness of not taking heed to the prophetic word of God found in Bible prophecy. And I've heard all the excuses. Bible prophecy causes divisions and it's distracting and it's confusing and, and so on. Well, about that, think of this. How many things have you spent your life enjoying and learning that are temporal and won't help you prepare for eternity? For example, can you imagine someone who's never watched a professional football game or baseball game or other sports, and they turn on the TV and they see all these things going on, these people running around, it would be very confusing. They don't know what's going on. For me, I grew up in a, in a football family, and I knew the positions. I knew the names of people who played different positions. And, and when that fellow in, in a black and white striped shirt blew a whistle and threw a flag, I knew why he threw it and what the penalty was before he even announced it. Yeah? And there's nothing wrong with that. But compare that to knowing and enjoying and learning and preparing for eternity, preparing for the day our Messiah Jesus comes for us. There shouldn't be any comparison. We should be so involved with knowing the word of the Lord and hanging out with people that do, it should far outweigh the temporal things that we enjoy and spend our time in. Amen? Amen? And so Peter says that you do well to take heed of Bible prophecy as a light that shines in a dark place. You see, the darker it gets, the brighter your path if you know the prophetic word of the Lord. Walking in the dark is scary, but walking in the light in the midst of great darkness brings great confidence and hope. What hope? I'll share more about that with you in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. And remember to watch therefore and be ready. 
The Watch Therefore message is life preserving and life saving. It's life preserving because it shows those who were in lukewarmness, that terrible, dangerous condition our Lord Jesus warned us about, that time is running out. Now is the time to repent of lukewarmness. It's life saving because it warns the lost. Now is the time. You're running out of time. Now is the time to get right with God and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Watch Therefore message, life preserving and life saving. Blessing Israeli Believers is such an important ministry. Our co-founding partner, John McTurnan and myself, we founded the ministry Blessing Israeli Believers because we learned that one of the best ways to bless Israel is to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Jesus. They're getting out the gospel. They're making disciples. They're saving babies from abortion, helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua. One of the best ways to bless Israel is to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Jesus. Join us today. Along with taking the gospel to the Jew first and then to the nations, Romans 1.16, the apostle Paul also said that he was poured out for the faith of others. His life was poured out, and that's why we have our ministry poured out for the nations, taking the gospel and discipleship all over the world, and most recently in Africa, in Burundi, and Rwanda. Opportunities and open doors abound. Join us and be poured out for the nations. A great way to watch Therefore is to go to our website, watchtherefore.tv, and sign up for our monthly Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations newsletters. There you can get prayer points and have a better understanding of the details of our ministry, especially for those who want to join us in prayer and financial support. So go to watchtherefore.tv. You'll find out a lot of important things about our ministry, and most importantly, Sign up for our monthly newsletters, Blessing Israeli Believers, poured out for the nations. Remember, watch therefore and be ready. As you can imagine, our Watch Therefore media, Blessing Israeli Believers, and poured out for the nations ministries cost a lot of money. And first, let me say about that, if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, please don't send any money into this ministry. It's our strong desire that you would receive Him and be our guest today. But for those who understand the principles of sowing and reaping and laying your treasures up in heaven, we know that these ministries are advancing the kingdom of the Lord and you'll be laying your treasures up in heaven. So you can give online or by post. There's information up on your screen. And what a way to watch their form be ready. Laying your treasures up in heaven with Watch Therefore, Blessing Israeli Believers and Pour It Out for the Nations. And for all of you who are prayerfully and financially partnering with Watch Therefore and our ministries, let me say thank you. God bless you. We're praying for you and trusting that we're all together being very fruitful. And one day we will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Biad Chaim, which is Hebrew for pro-life, Israel pro-life is one of our primary partners as abortion is a big problem in Israel. And that leads to a special person I'd like to introduce to you today. Her name is Helena, and she works with Biad Chaim. She's been a volunteer for many years with Biad Chaim. And Helena, it's so nice to get to talk with you today. Me too. Yeah? So why don't you share a little bit about your experience and your work with Biad Chaim Israel pro-life down through the years. Uh, many years ago, I met uh, one of the leaders from Tiberias. We were talking about uh, her ministry and uh, it was on my heart to help uh, women uh, save their babies. So what I was able to do is translate materials for uh, Bad Chaim from English into Russian in order to reach uh, many Russian speaking people in Israel. And you have a very difficult situation and I'd like to hear about that. I'd like our viewers to hear about this very difficult situation that you're in now. Um, me and my husband, um, we have two children and we are expect expecting soon our third one in December. 
we are really glad about it and it was a surprise. We always wanted to have big family. Uh, but uh, recently, this summer, my husband had a severe heart attack and only for gra by grace of God, he stayed alive. It, we saw miracle of God and hands of God, how he kept uh, his life because his heart was uh, almost not working. Now, by the grace of God, his heart is working by 35 percentage. Mm. Uh, but we see that God is so faithful to keep our family and to keep his life. But our financial situation uh, decreased uh, because he's not able to work as he was working. If you want to support Helena and her whole house uh, and come alongside them and partner with them, what you can do is is give it by check or online and there's information coming up on your screen there and as you do so make sure you put somewhere in a, in a memo section or a purpose line online or in the check Helena H-E-L-E-N-A and this will help support her and her whole house so keep going and we'll see the goodness of the Lord here in the land of the living and in the promised land amen Welcome back to Watch Therefore. Earlier, I was sharing with you about the Apostle Peter when he, James, and John saw with their very eyes Messiah Jesus transfigured right before them. And then Peter compares this event to Bible prophecy, including the second coming of Messiah Jesus. Let's read again in 2 Peter chapter 1. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the voice which came from heaven we heard when we are with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy wherein to you do well that you take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. We left off at verse 19 and we saw that we should take heed of Bible prophecy as a light that shines in the darkness and that the darker it gets, the brighter our path if you know the prophetic word of the Lord and that walking in the dark is scary. But when you're walking in the light in the midst of darkness, the Lord gives us great confidence and hope. Hope of what? The rapture. Look at 1 John chapter 3, beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. When Messiah Jesus appears, we, having lived our lives purifying ourselves, walking by faith in Messiah Jesus, looking forward to that day, we will become like him meaning we will have glorified, sinless, eternal hearts, minds, and bodies. Every day, we can and should live with this hope of that day. Listen to Colossians chapter 1. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have this hope of that day when King Jesus catches us up into the clouds to take us back to that place he's been preparing for us just like our Messiah Jesus told us in the Gospel of John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And, and the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4 that we will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. And listen to Peter's first epistle or letter. 
And, and, and let me tell you before I read it, let me tell you this. I have great hope. The darker and stranger it gets, and it's getting very dark and very strange in the world today like never before. The darker and stranger it gets. I have great hope. Now to this first letter Peter wrote. Therefore, gird up the loins of your minds, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming for us any moment in the clouds. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 continues, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to you do well that you take heed as a, unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The day star rising in our hearts. What does this mean? Well, as evil and strange as it's getting, I know that the day I live and hope for certainly is coming. That day will dawn when the day star will arise in my, our hearts. What or better said, who is the day star? I'm glad you asked. Revelation 22. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. The day will dawn and Christ in me, the hope of glory, will rise up in me as I'm caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Will you be there? Will we see each other there? Oh, hallelujah. And then in 2 Peter, he continues in chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Listen, I've heard so many people say, well, to me, it doesn't mean that. It means this. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter what the Bible says or means to you and me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your opinion is or what my opinion is. It matters what the Holy Spirit meant when he wrote through these God-ordained authors of the Bible. It matters what the Bible actually teaches. It's not subjective to your opinion or my opinion. And that's why I've quoted so many verses today in this program. The Bible certainly is the best interpreter of the Bible. I was sitting with a dear brother of the Lord, and he's a Bible teacher. And I said to him, sir, as we were discussing these things, and he was in disagreement, he said, I, I said to him, sir, isn't context king in Bible interpretation? Doesn't the context help determine what the passage means? And he said, no. At that point, we have nothing to discuss. Why? Because then you can make the Bible say anything. Listen, there's an old saying out there. If you torture the scriptures enough, you can make them confess to anything. And so we look at the Bible and cross-reference through the scriptures. And what does it say in the context in which the passage is written? Now, the Holy Spirit spoke through Bible authors, some who I've quoted today and others certainly, all through the Bible. Increasingly, folks, we live in an anti-hope, anti-rapture church environment, and it will rob you of your blessed hope if you let it. Yeah? And the Spirit of the Lord, speaking through Titus, who wrote chapter 2, says that grace teaches us to look for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, today, like never before, take heed of Bible prophecy. And you can go to our YouTube channel and learn much more. And I encourage you to do that. But mostly, and more importantly, adjust your life around Bible prophecy. And guess what? Then you can watch the lights go on in your heart, in your mind and in your life. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe the lights have never gone on in your life because the first initial lights that go on in our hearts, minds, and lives 
is when we are born again, when we're given a new life in Messiah Jesus. Our Savior told us, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. What does this mean? Well, this means I was born physically, but born spiritually dead. Dying on my way to a grave and then the judgment for my sins. But God loves you. He loves me. He loves the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. What does it mean to believe in him? It means to repent, forsake our sins, and put our faith in Messiah Jesus. Cry out to him, O oh Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. The Bible says, as many as received him, received him, what does this mean? Received him as Lord and Savior. To them he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe upon his name. Cry out to him today, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. I need to be saved, Lord. Please, please save me. And when you do that, he'll send his Holy Spirit to live in you and bring your human spirit to life for the very first time. Has that really happened to you? Cry out to him in this way. And if you're doing that today, there's information at the bottom of your screen. Use it. Contact us. We'll send you a free brochure that will help you begin your new life in Messiah Jesus. And for all who are watching today, now is the time to prepare for that day when this Savior, this King, comes for us. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, I'm asking that you would bless all of our viewers today. Bless them, keep them, and help us purify ourselves. Help us cooperate with your grace and mercy to be ready for that day when the groom, Messiah Jesus, comes for his bride, his people. Oh, Father in heaven, thank you in Messiah Jesus' name. Well, here's how we like to end the program. Remember to watch therefore and be ready. Messiah Jesus is coming for his people any moment. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at Watch Therefore TV. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch Therefore and be ready. Slain, he'll come again. Our conquering king on that day, his sword will go forth to take back and re.